Hey everyone, Diggs here for Lockpickers United, and welcome back to Mentorship Monday. Last week, we told you a little bit about the belt system, and how it works, and how it kind of guides you through the process. And so for this week, I thought it would be kind of neat to play an old video. It's actually my first video ever, uh, as I picked the American 1100 series to get my blue belt. And so in this video, I pick the lock, I tear it down, and I put it back together, meeting all the requirements for green, and then I shortly thereafter turned this lock into a challenge lock, and that's how I got my blue belt. So I'm going to play this video for you and talk about some of the things that are going on in it. Uh, understand that at this point in time, I was a real novice, and so I'm not even using a follower. And it's kind of neat, actually, to know that an American 1100, it doesn't require a follower. You can use a AAA battery for it. You can use an honest-to-goodness follower, but you don't even need one. So with that, I'm going to voice over one of my very first videos, which I didn't speak in at all because I couldn't pick and talk at the same time. I still have trouble with that. And um, hopefully you can learn something from the process and you'll appreciate the fact that I'm sharing history with you. So the requirements for a belt video are that you pick and gut in one continuous take. The reassembly part isn't always required. You only actually have to do that one time. And that's just to show that you know how to do it. So here you can see I'm using a Sparrow's High Reach as the pick and the 50 thousandths heavy bar from Sparrow's. And at this point, I think I had picked this lock probably 25, 30 times. So it was a fairly quick process. And, it, you know, it, it makes me look better at it than I actually am. And there we're open. So to take one of these apart, really all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. And what I probably should have done is used a real screwdriver instead of these multi-tip ones because the tip that I did use wasn't quite big enough. So you can see my left hand, the index finger, goes to hold the uh, threaded insert there that the screw screws into, which holds on that cover plate and outslides the kick. There's nothing holding it in except for that face cover. So there I reset the lock, insert the key, and I'm going to use my thumb and the tension wrench to take the C-clip off, pop it off the back there. And so now the plug is free to move inside of there. So I kick it to 90 degrees, and you'll notice the longer section in the back there of the tail is the side that I put up towards the driver pins, or in this case down towards the driver pins. And so I'm just very slowly, very carefully uh, sliding the plug out Chamber, chamber by chamber so that they don't fly out at me and grabbing them with the tweezers and putting them where they belong. So being my first video, I didn't even know that the convention was to put uh, pin one on the left and pin six on the right. So you'll see, not only do I put my pins down six, five, four, three, two, one, I also put the driver pins in the bottom row, and then the springs in the middle, and then the key pins at the top, which really makes no logical sense. But that wasn't the point of this video. The point was to demonstrate that I could gut, I could pick this lock, I could gut it, and, uh, and I could put it back together. So you can see there, that's a common mistake. One of the key pins jumped out because I didn't bother to put my finger over them when I pulled the key out. It's something that you can take away from this. And again, I'm putting them, putting them down in a backwards order. They're right to left instead of left to right. Not really a big deal. One of the things that you'll notice whenever you see a pick and gut video, there's always a close up shot. And the idea of that is to show that you haven't modified the pins to make them easier to pick. And in this lock, you, uh, I'm you know, showing the serrations and the key pins on the top row and then the serrations and the spools in the driver pins in the bottom row. So it's picked, it's gutted, I've shown the close-up, and now I'm dropping springs back into the chambers. The 1100 series is a six-chambered lock, but typically only has five pin stacks, so that's why the last chamber doesn't actually get any. And uh, another important note is you can tell where the front of the lock is 
because there's a little lip. If you look where the Bible extends past the lock body, you can see that tiny little lip. It's facing us right now. And that's how you identify the front and you know where to put the plug in. Another thing, in this lock, the springs are so weak, uh, I've already showed you that you can gut it without a follower, but you can actually put it back together without a follower as well. So there I just set all the driver pins in the chambers sitting on top of the springs, and they're waiting to be pushed down. So now I'm dropping the key pins back into the plug. This, is, this whole process is very much helped by having pinning tweezers. So if you don't have any, you should get some or make some. And we're actually going to show you how to make some soon. So now I'm thinking about it. Okay, there's the front. And I kick it to 90 degrees again, making sure to angle it just a little bit so those key pins don't dump out because of gravity. And I'm sliding the plug back in. And really only one pin fights me. You see, I reach in there and just kind of push it down out of the way. I'm grabbing the C-clip for the back. You can pop those back on with your fingers because they're not very strong in this lock. And there you see a little piece pop out. And that's actually a mechanism cover. Uh, there was a bypass discovered for this lock. And so American Lock added that little piece of metal to keep you from being able to reach all the way back the keyway to the back of the keyway and just actuate the lock. So now I've got the threaded insert back in there. Screws going back into it, tighten it back down. And that screw really, I mean, it holds the whole locking mechanism in place. You can actually take the shackles out of these. Um, if you take the rotating body out of the middle when everything's removed, uh, the shackle will come out too. And so I demonstrate that the lock still works and we're done. Come on back tomorrow for Teardown Tuesday. Uh, the lock of the week is a real cool one. So this Mentorship Monday was a little down and dirty, a bit of a quick video, and we're going to go more in depth next week. But we all had some things to do this weekend, and with Father's Day and all, this is what you get. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful for you, you know, smash the buttons and whatnot. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.